you know, the questions when it comes to marketing and life in general is always like, kind of like health and fitness. Like there's everyone here knows how to be in better shape. Eat better, work out. You know and everyone in this room knows you could have made one fucking TikTok video that went viral and would have sold that shit out, but you didn't do it. The question becomes why? Are you concerned if you posted on TikTok that it only got nine views? Do you have the humility to actually build a business? Are you worried about people looking at your videos and seeing that they only got six views and laughing? Like what's in it in your head that's stopping you from the thing you know that you should be doing? Okay. okay. This is my old These are all my alums. Anything I can answer even outside of the VM stuff if in case someone here has consumed it or anything I can bring some value? What's your name? Daniel. Daniel, nice to meet you bro. Uh, I just kind of got a question about kind of inspiration. Like yep. Sometimes kind of when you're in this kind of like path alone, you kind of like lose track if you're on the right path or not. And even though like people are telling you that you are, you kind of like for yourself, like you're telling yourself that you might not be in that path. So I'm kind of just like, a simple question is like, how do you keep getting inspired? How do you keep pushing yourself? How do you keep? Well, I think, I think the question you're asking might be a little bit more complex, which is what you don't want to do is, is create motivation to do something you don't want to do. Notice how you said other people said you're on the right path. Like, do you think you're on the right path? Are you interested in actually doing it? The biggest issue for all you at this point in your life cycle is are you doing this for yourself or are you doing this for someone else, right? Like, why are you doing this? When I was your age, entrepreneurship wasn't even a thing. Now it's a thing. I'm 47 years old and young people might think it's cool, I'm in the room right now. That's fucking crazy to me. <laughs> that wasn't real when I was 20, right? Like entrepreneurs look like nerds. And, like, and you know, like it just wasn't a thing, now it's cool. So the thing I'm always worried about with Babson, I spoke to USC this week, the entrepreneurial class, now that it's a thing, it's more like being an athlete or like a rapper. Like it's like cool. So I'm like, who's in here doing this only because they think it's cool it's not really who they are. They're really a guidance counselor. They're really a ski instructor. They're really a cook. They're really, you know, like, they, they're really just a top 15 executive. The 15th biggest executive at Facebook made $80 trillion. You know what I mean? Not that exact number, but like a lot. <laughs> so A, the first, when I hear that question from you, I'm like, it's really easy to be motivated when you're doing what the fuck you're supposed to be doing in your soul not in the thing that gets you to the next place. Like I'm gonna get a job after school or I'll, I'm gonna make 100K when I'm 25 or I'm gonna make a million. Like, so, you know, that's different than another thing that might be coming up for some of the people in the room which is patience. So many people here are so worried about what people think about them, they're trying to rush to the win. So it's sometimes hard to stay motivated when you're impatient. Because like, your practical brain's like, you're not gonna really be at that level of like what entrepreneurship can do for you until 28, 32. When you're in this room, 32 seems like a million, I remember. I remember being under 22 and thinking 32 is like a lot. Like my cousin was 30, Bobby was 30 when I started working at my dad's liquor store. I thought he was old as shit. He was. Yeah, he was like, that was like a grown ass man. <laughs> right? So. I come in here at 47, I'm 17 years older than Bobby was when I was looking at him at your age and I'm telling you, I feel like I'm in this class with y'all. Like it still feels that fresh and young in here. So you got time, but sometimes it's hard because you're not patient and you're not patient because you're worried about what other people think. Thank you so much. Of course, okay, here's the hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go, go ahead my man. Uh, so I want to start a marketing agency and I was wondering, would you recommend joining an agency like Vander to learn or just get That's a funny, qu it's really funny. I just the other day said I fucked up and should have made AJ, who went to BU, not too far from you guys. I wish he went to another agency for a year before we started Vayner, because we just learned everything in the fucking streets and like did so much shit wrong for so long that if he was there for a year, he would have siphoned all that out and we would have been good. So, you know, ironically, you know, five years ago I might have said to you, just don't worry about the dumb shit we do and everybody else does. With clear, fresh eyes, you might do something more interesting. I think there's a balance. Like a year, you can only get so many bad habits and you probably will learn a lot of like basic shit. And especially if you're capable of being at a school like this, your brain works in a manner where you can learn that shit. And so, you know, I would say both work. 
It completely comes down to you. I was incapable of working somewhere else. It was never in my DNA, but that's why I was also incapable of going to Babson because I wasn't able to conform to even school in junior high and high school. For all of you, you have that temperament. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. So you might want to use that to your advantage. I don't say that as a pride. I don't say that I couldn't work. I wish I could have. Might have sped up some shit for me. I wish I wasn't so 100. 80 would have been beautiful. And so you got to be self-aware of who you are. How would you learn better? Are you like me and you learn it in the dirt and it's just like you need that creative process? Or are you like a lot of other people where the context of like seeing it in motion will allow you? I I really wish I told AJ to go work at an agency for a year. It would have helped us a lot. Yes, sir. Uh, My name's Dan. I run a D2C supplement brand. Yep. I just launched it a couple months ago. Congrats. It's a great product, but you know, right now I'm kind of struggling to get sales. So I'm curious what you would. Are you selling it on Shopify or Amazon? Oh, Shopify. It just went on Amazon today, actually. Amazing. So when you sell shit, you have to create demand. So what are you doing to create demand? Right now, I, mean, I I first tried advertising on Facebook, but the problem with that is I don't really have the budget right now to be doing paid media in that way. How much organic creative did you do? Honestly, not. I feel like I probably should have. You know, the questions when it comes to marketing and life in general is always like kind of like health and fitness. Like there's everyone here knows how to be in better shape. Eat better, work out, but now go do it. Even like the way we just had that exchange, you, you didn't even allow me to get to the part. You already knew like, yeah, like if I, like you know and everyone in this room knows you could have made one fucking TikTok video that went viral and would have sold that shit out, but you didn't do it. The question becomes why? Like these are the things that I'm most fascinated by. There's nobody 20 fucking years old that doesn't realize they should be posting 40 times a day organically on YouTube Shorts, TikTok. You know, you may not know Facebook Reels is popping off because you're too young and you're not in a marketing company like this that's spending a lot of time, but you definitely know you should be posting on fucking TikTok. Are you concerned if you post it on TikTok that it only got nine views? Do you have the humility to actually build a business? Are you worried about people looking at your videos and seeing that they only got six views and laughing? Like what's in it in your head that's stopping you from the thing you know that you should be doing? You could DM 100 people and say you wanna send samples to them. Uh, I've sent it to like about 15, 20 people. And what's happening? It's someone who posted it. Like I just saw a notification a few minutes ago someone posted on their story. Nice man, it's the grind, right? It's like build, 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 build. But your own organic content is the best because it's free. You had to ship that shit, it cost you to make it, right? Yeah, exactly. Like they may not post it, that costs money. You trying to make creative organically on social costs time, but it's fucking free. I was thinking about Milo Brand when I saw this book and like the conversations I have with a lot of like my teachers and my parents about like burn the boats and toss pen be away. And I was wondering what you think about like, like for example, like my dad always tells me all the time to save a bunch of my money and not like put, take a lot of risks at, as in like buying a bunch of inventory, hoping to sell it, you know. And I have another FME teacher, one of our classes that always tells me, you know, take the risk, see if it works, see if it doesn't. This is the thing that is fucked up in the world. I'll use politics. Everyone's so fucking red and so blue when the answer's purple. Everyone's pulling so hard from like, Pops is saying like save every fucking dollar because it worked for Pops. And teacher's saying take the high risk because he's seen example or she's seen examples of high risk. The answer is nobody knows. I should have taken risks because I was good at it. If you're bad at it and you take risks, you're gonna lose. You're gonna wake up in debt with a warehouse full of shit. Nobody really knows and so I think you find the medium which is like take micro risk. You understand? Too many people are so ideological like I'm taking risks, I'm burning the fucking boat and you take all $1,800 you got to your fucking name and you buy fucking inventory and try to go with no idea what the fuck's gonna happen versus spend $500 and go. Like why, like everyone's just gotten too extreme. Right, but look, I will say this as like a thing that I can leave you with that really fucking resonates for me this, is, this next eight to 10 years is when you should take the biggest risks of your life. On some real shit. It gets harder to take risks when you're old. We're not old, but like, old, for you we're old. You know what I mean? Like, this is when four of you can live, live in the same shitty fucking apartment, eating shitty food. Not like, this is when you can. The problem is too many people either rush into being grown up 
because their parents are telling them or would rather take 70,000 on a job so they can buy some dumb shit like some dunks and a fucking decent car versus chasing their dream. This is when you need to take the biggest risks of your life because when you're 40, it gets harder when you have family, when you have responsibilities. This is the, by far the best time. People have got it reversed. When you get out of school, that's when you should go craziest. But you have to live humble and that's the part that everyone struggles with. People literally sacrifice their dreams to be able to buy expensive cocktails and go to like Coachella. You understand? So like, A, find the middle in those two pieces of advice, but in the macro, you never can live on no money more than 23. Cause you're willing to team up with each other. Just gotta be a little more strategic. Too many kids talk big game that they're gonna fucking do something, but then take jobs just so they could spend it on Uber and fucking Starbucks. Take the fucking bus and fucking make your own coffee. You understand? All of a sudden, miraculously, you got money to take a risk. My little brother has autism, and growing up, he'd always like lose his fidget toys. Yeah. So after looking at some of your content and getting inspired to do something entrepreneurial, I created this thing called Fidget Infused Clothing. So we attach fidget toys. Love. Right, to help people with autism and ADHD not lose it. And three years later, now 19, I've been on People Magazine, ABC, Inside Edition, The Boston Globe, and we've helped over 2,000 families, so. Really That's what's up. It. Bro, do me a favor. Don't give up on this thing yeah. for a real minute. And it, right now it's easy. Mm-hmm. But when you're 27 and you got $14,000 to your name and you're still going at it and you've been doing it for five, six, seven years, it gets harder. But this is such a fucking, like you'll never be more passionate about anything. Yeah. It's impossible. It hits too close to your heart. You'll never have the juice to do any, no matter what you do in your life, it will never matter more to you than this brand. Mm -hmm. So back to what we were just talking about, this is where you gotta put your head down and go to sleep for a decade. Don't even think about anything else but just trying to build this for 10 years. And, And then if it's not there, then you can be like, okay. Because at 90, if you bounce on this after three years and wanna get to the next thing, you'll regret it because it's too important to you. Yeah, appreciate it. Pleasure, my man. I gotta run, I apologize. Thank you. Have the best day. Take care, everyone.